Great. Well, welcome to the third in a series of webinars that we're producing in conjunction with our colleagues at National Instruments. This is Ben Zimmer from Enable Training Consulting, and I'm here with Greg Sullivan. Hello. And in this in this uh, in this uh, episode, we're going to get into a little bit more detail how to use LabVIEW in the FTC context. So we're going to begin with a bit of a review of the material that we covered in the previous webinar, and we're going to go into a little bit of detail about how the field control system software works, how the Samantha module works, and how you can get started deploying code for an FTC, FTC robot. And as you recall, in the previous webinar, we talked about servo motors. We talked about the concept of a sub-VI. In particular, we went through the use of a, one called the screen update sub-VI. We talked about the use of the for loop, and we did a walkthrough of some advanced autonomous code building. So just as a review, servo motors are automatic devices that use an error sensing feedback mechanism to correct performance. In other words, they go where you tell them to go. You give them a defined position and it goes to that rotation. In most common use within the Tetrix context are 180 degree servo motors, and that's the ones that we went through in the previous webinar. We also talked about a function, uh, really it's a structure, called the for loop. In the very first webinar, we went through the use of the while loop, which allows you to run code contained within that structure until a condition is true or false. For loops are a little different, in fact, in the, in the way that they're used to run a fixed number of times. They're used to execute a subdiagram n times, where n is the value wired into the count terminal, this one right here. And as is the case for the while loop as well, you have an iteration terminal, which provides the current count that the loop is on. There's a common stumbling point when using both the while loop and the for loop, which is to remember that the iteration terminal gives a value of 0 the first time through the loop, and a value of 1 the second time through the loop. The concept of a sub-VI is a really important concept for creating really easy to read, really easy to edit, modular LabVIEW code. A sub-VI is just a term for a VI that's used inside another VI, and it's convenient because it allows you to bundle several actions into one function. And in addition to simplifying your block diagram, it allows you to reuse that function in multiple places and only have to debug it and make changes to it from one location. The example we gave was for the screen update sub-VI. And this, this one performed two functions. First, it took some string inputs and wrote those values on the NXT screen. And it also provided readings from the light and the sonar sensors on the screen and also output their values so that they can be used elsewhere in your LabVIEW code. It was used widely throughout the Tetrix Getting Started Guide. It's a series of resources that we've pointed to in each of our webinars up to this point. Then we went on to build some autonomous code. The purpose of this autonomous code was basically a modified line follower that performed an arm and gripper action. So to take a quick trip through memory lane here as to the way this code ran, it started off searching for target. And if a target is found, within 17 centimeters, it would perform a series of actions. First it would lower the arm, close the gripper, and then raise the arm, essentially to pick up an object. It would also use a touch sensor to verify that an object was in fact picked up. And if that touch sensor was pressed after those series of actions, the NXT would emit a sound and write success on its screen, but then loop back around to the searching for target mode. This allows you to then repeat the process to find the destination where you're going to drop the object that you've picked up using the exact same code. And there's more, there are other branches to this flowchart which allow you to perform a slightly different action if the touch sensor is not pressed. In other words, if you fail to pick up the object, it'll write a failure status to the screen and then loop back around to the target searching. And then if there is no target within the proximity of 17 centimeters, it follows the standard line follower code to basically turn right or left depending on whether or not you're on the line. But it had a slight modification there where if there's an object within 30 centimeters, it will slow down to a speed of 15. And if there's no object detected, it'll go at a speed of 30. So it's taking the same basic line follower code that we created and we got a quick tour of in the first webinar, and then modifying it to add sufficient capability to perform different speeds, and then further to that, adding the ability to actuate an arm and a gripper and verify its behavior and that everything was, was picked up and sensed properly using touch sensors and, and other structures within the LabVIEW code. 
So that's where we are up to this point. And it, I'd like to reiterate that the code that we created, although really applicable to an FTC scenario, really did not exist within any of the FTC frameworks. It was not run using the field control system software. It was just run from within LabVIEW. So that's the leap we're going to take next in this third webinar, putting everything in the context of the FTC competition. So here we're going to talk about the field control system software. We're going to then talk a little bit about the Samantha module and how to use it to connect to the bot. In a little bit of context, the Samantha module is a Wi-Fi module that allows us to use a standard 802.11b or N connection to drive our robot. We're going to talk a little bit about code templates, although we're going to really leave the details of making complicated and significant modifications to those templates to the webinar that we're going to do next time. But we are going to give a very quick tour of them. And then we're going to demonstrate actually running the code using the FCS.